The renewable energy sector in Europe is growing. Between 2004 and 2023, the share of renewable energy almost tripled, rising all the way to 24.5% in 2023. Every kilowatt hour brings us closer to a renewable future and a green utopia and a cleaner climate, but wait. What's a negative energy price? And is that good or bad? Whenever a lot of people want to um, generate electricity and not a lot of people want to buy it, then usually prices drop. Then you're probably selling the electricity for a very low price and it could potentially be negative. Negative money? Let's break this down. In very simplistic terms, energy providers make money by matching demand and supply of electricity. But a negative energy price happens when there's more energy being produced than there is demand, and the balance gets out of whack. For example, on bank holidays, factories, stores, and offices are closed, so they don't need energy to operate. But if it's a sunny summer holiday, well, those solar panels, for example, are still on, even as demand is lower. And when supply is a lot bigger than demand, prices get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper until they slip into the minus. That's where the word negative comes in. But wait, that sounds good. Energy so cheap that it's free? So what's the problem? When there are negative energy prices, the suppliers of this electricity and the investors in this technology suffer financial losses. The negative energy price means that you're not, e not only not earning something for the electricity that you're providing to the market, uh, but that you have to pay something for uh, providing that electricity to the market. So it is for an investor, it is a, it is a bad thing. While Berga Hemetsberger is the CEO of Solar Power Europe, she says negative energy prices have been hitting record highs in recent years in Europe. We recorded some 6,000, roughly 6,500 negative prices um, hours where there were negative prices all over Europe in 2023. These kinds of record highs are not the kind that Europe wants to be hitting. Remember when Walburga mentioned investors? So it is for an investor. It is, a, it is a bad thing. Some of the analysts we spoke to say that there are some interest groups worried about investing in projects that won't make a return. We heard some concerns and anecdotal stories of investors hesitating or asking more questions about the viability of these green energy project investments. I think the clearest example of that we see is the recent uh, wind power auctions in, in Denmark. That's Chris Roslow. He's a senior energy analyst for a think tank called Ember. Well, no, no bids came forward for the latest offering. I know that um, uncertainty over the future of power prices and whether there would be enough electricity demand at the times in which wind was producing energy, that was part of the, the, the concern there. And the lowest price we've seen is minus 500 euros per megawatt hour in this time. Fabian Hunica is an energy analyst with a focus on Germany at Agora Think Tank. For reference, a megawatt hour is 1,000 kilowatt hours. And in practical terms, for example, the German government estimates that approximately 3,500 kilowatt hours of electricity are used annually by a two-person household. A reduction in government subsidies in Germany is also contributing to investors asking more questions about renewables projects, according to Fabian. When we look back to uh, maybe 20 years ago, the subsidy for photovoltaic was above 50 cent per kilowatt hour. And now 20 years later, um, when you look to the auctions for photovoltaic, um, um, ground mounted photovoltaic, you will see prices about 5 cent per kilowatt hour, so only one tenth of this value. Uh, whereas the power price itself is about 8 cent per kilowatt hour at the moment. But back to negative energy prices. Does anyone actually benefit? Let's take a beat here for a second. Ideally, economics and sustainability shouldn't be at odds. After all, we are talking about the health of the planet and limiting the worst effects of climate change. Not to mention, there are tangible economic gains. Along with the growth of renewable energy capacity have come jobs. 
In Germany, the figures from the government show that the sector hit a recent high in 2022, with over 387,000 people employed. The OECD also estimates that between 14 and 21 percent of jobs in Germany are green-driven, even if not directly in renewables industries. But who benefits directly when energy prices go negative? The end consumer is, is not really uh, seeing these price signals because we're talking about wholesale energy markets here, which is the place that your energy supplier goes to buy the energy that they are then pass on to you. So you won't see a rebate on your energy bill, but some analysts working in the renewable energy sector say that ultra cheap prices have contributed to keeping energy costs from getting too high for everyone. The trading companies who are buying electricity for you and for the for the industry and for all the consumers, they have less cost when buying electricity because of the negative power prices. So fact one, uh, the negative power price is reducing also the um, average power price, which you in the end have to pay for. So how much savings have been made exactly? What we have reckoned is that roughly per year, the electricity price is dampened by about 9 billion euros a year annually. This is David Vedapol. He basically makes the sun shine at the German Solar Association. How much of the prices uh, that they uh, that they pass on, you know, we can't uh, we can't tell you, but but certainly there's a very visible effect uh, of this because the marginal costs of solar they are zero. So economically, negative energy prices are potentially good for the consumer, but currently bad for producers and investors. Different countries have different energy mixes and needs, but one thing remains consistent. The reasons for negative energy prices are not are not straightforward. They can be complex and varied, but in some countries, uh, it's quite clear what the reason is. We heard from Chris earlier. He's an analyst at Ember. So in countries like uh, Spain, Netherlands, and in Germany, we've seen very rapid growth in solar power, especially since the gas crisis. When, when gas became very expensive and coal as well, which really made solar power a, a much more uh, attractive investment financially. According to Irina, Germany is a front runner in solar generation in Europe. The latest figures show sunny Spain was the second largest generator of solar energy in 2022, with Italy coming in third. Meanwhile, here are the top European countries for negative energy price hours in 2024. Topping the list are Finland and Sweden. Germany and the Netherlands are also on the list, just like Chris said. And while Spain doesn't break through to the top here, the shocking part with Spain is that in 2023, there were no negative energy prices. But a year later, 247 negative energy price hours. That's massive growth. Situated in the southwest of Europe, when it comes to power connections, Spain is relatively isolated from the rest of the continent, according to Chris. Spain and the whole Iberian Peninsula is not very well connected to the rest of Europe. So uh, this is one of the reasons why um, Spain is, is, is currently a hotspot for, for, for kind of negative or, or low prices. They are finding their own solutions to that, however. So what kind of solutions does Spain have that the rest of Europe might be able to catch on to? We've traveled to Sevilla, a city in the southwest of Spain, sunny and clear even on this winter morning. We're visiting a five-year-old solar power plant outside of town that produces enough energy for 3,000 households when operating at peak capacity. So the negative energy prices is the new elephant in the room in Spain. And this basically comes from the fact that solar produces the most at times when the demand of the country is lower. Jesus Baucho Castrillo is the head of business development at Blue Tree Group. They basically oversee renewable energy projects in Europe, North America, and South America. Here in Spain, he sees one potential solution as big industrial batteries. This is the, the most use product at this moment. It's true that there, there, there is being like a huge amount of R&D around batteries. So you have big players like KTL, Tesla, BYD that are doing amazing stuff. 
These massive batteries from companies like Form Energy, Tesla, and BYD can help smooth out these energy extremes we spoke about earlier, saving the excess energy and storing it until it's needed. The industry has been ramping up, anticipating this need in the race towards net zero emissions. With a record high addition of 45 gigawatts added to the global energy storage market in 2023, according to Bloomberg's research arm NEF. So the battery storage market in Spain is, is improving. They're also looking towards green hydrogen to, as a way to use this excess of power they have at certain times of day. That's right, hydrogen, or more specifically, green hydrogen, as a direct fuel source made using renewable power. Green hydrogen is produced through a process called electrolysis. To learn more about the process, we head to Guadalajara, also in Spain and about an hour outside of Madrid. We're visiting the Accelera factory, where they're making the actual hydrogen electrolyzers needed for the electrolysis process. Andreas Lippert oversees this kind of business happening at Accelera. So in essence, an electrolyzer is very simply reversing the reaction to, com to create water. So we take water and electricity, which is the energy source, and split the water into hydrogen and oxygen. And then it comes out pretty pure hydrogen on one side and oxygen on the other side. Only water vapor is emitted when the hydrogen is burned, making it a clean fuel source, especially if renewable energy is used for the electrolysis process. And at Accelera, they're going even further, according to this plant's head of production, Luis Enyeguez, who says they're even using renewable power to help make the electrolyzer devices themselves. We have 1.58 megawatts of photovoltaic power on the roof to supply the energy we need for the manufacture of electrolyzers and for air conditioning. Good strides for sure, but it's important to mention that there's a serious inefficiency issue associated with electrolyzing water into hydrogen. It's not a one-to-one -one transfer of energy. A lot of energy is lost. So one-third of the electricity at best uh, can be used and compared to a battery storage system with 90% efficiency, this, uh, yeah, the, the hydrogen alternative is the worst, uh, it is not, it's not as good as battery storage systems. However, battery storage systems can only store for short periods of time, for days and hours, and hydrogen can store energy for months and years. So, to cover seasonal effects, hydrogen could be a solution. The Accelera facility opened at the end of 2024. When it was first announced, the company hoped it would be able to produce 500 megawatts of electrolyzers per year. Another argument for green hydrogen is that the infrastructure to store, compress, and move it already exists. One thing that people forget is that we actually produce 100 million tons of hydrogen today. And so, um, so, so the equipment exists. When we think about transporting hydrogen in pipelines, um, many of the natural gas pipelines in Europe can be retrofitted to actually move hydrogen. So in the case, for instance, of Germany, of the, of the core grid, of the 9,000 or so kilometers, about 60% will be repurposed natural gas pipelines. So not everything is brand new. In fact, we know how to do this. Currently, the vast majority of hydrogen made in Europe is made with fossil fuels, with various processes that fall under the umbrella term reforming. Only a small sliver of hydrogen is green. And zooming out even more, at the moment, hydrogen makes up a tiny part of the European energy mix, just 2%, at least in 2022. And looking at the costs of this technology, on the startup side, green hydrogen is much more expensive than solar panels, for example, which have become remarkably cheap with China dominating the market. But as we've laid out, there is no silver bullet in the green energy transition, since commercial storage batteries really hold energy best for a few days maximum. But for weeks or months like this, other solutions will be needed. Negative energy prices have been on the rise in Europe for a few years. While potential solutions for storing excess energy and helping to regulate market demand do exist, there's currently no silver bullet. 
Green hydrogen could be part of the puzzle, but the energy conversion rate is low. To maintain investment in the renewable sector, there'll need to be a better balance between energy supply and demand, ensuring renewables don't become a victim of their own success.